All right, so I thought I would show you real quick what Yvonne always says, you know, this is going to go to auction, this is going to go to auction. So after we have gone to an auction and a lot of these things that are the extras that we know we're not going to sell in our booth, we'll take these to an auction house, uh, local in our, that used to be our town, now it's our county area. So I'll take these items that... Uh, like I said, are not going to sell in our booth. They'll sell to somebody, but not in our booth. And then I will start putting them out on a table over here. And I'll just try to pair like items, you know, so like some glass bottles or some memorabilia. Uh, she had already showed this lamp in one of her previous videos. It did not sell, so that is gonna go to auction. We'll see if somebody buys it there. All right, so now that I have everything all spread out, what I'll do is I will start grouping items together for sales. And we do have a lot of Christmas decor that we are not going to be using anymore. It's not the right time of the season, but we'll still get it out of here. Now I've got everything separated. There is some home decor glassware. Some regular home decor. This is what I would call maybe a manly box. It's got some old beer holders, whiskey, a very old can of hires, a little floral with some pictures and happy days. This is just a metal box. So somebody that's actually a scrapper might take this because it's got a lot of copper and brass in it. Um, some kitchenware. A little miscellaneous box right here of some small trinkets. This one, Yvonne got at, a, at an auction. It's got a ton of jewelry and then things to make jewelry with. This is a toy collector's box, possibly. Inside here are a bunch of wind-up toys that did not sell at our booth. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to piece this with something or just try to sell it on its own. We'll see if it can go in a box. Got a couple of lamps, and then we've got a ton of Christmas stuff. And that will all get sold as one lot in there. And then this will be a lot also with some 4th of July stuff. So now it's just time to load it all in the van. So nothing like Chris just taking a truckload, van load, full of items to send to auction, just leftovers and things that didn't sell or that we just didn't want to deal with. And so then the next weekend we go to an auction <laughs> or the following weekend we go to an auction. So yes, it was like two degrees today, even though it's in a pole barn, the pole barn's really not heated other than with like portable outdoor heater. And so it, it was a pretty cold, it was a pretty cold day. But that's what we resellers do. We're always on the hunt. And I, I don't know. Last weekend, we didn't get to go anywhere because there was a huge snowstorm. <laughs> so you have that. You'll have that. Anyway, so I can share with you what we got at today's auction. Um, yeah, and then a little bit of odds and ends. So you never know what you're going to. I mean, you see pictures at the auction, but you really like they just show what they think people would be interested or their favorite kind of thing. So there's always something new when you get there. You just, it's just a guessing game. So this auction house is one we go to a lot. It's about an hour away. And most of the items we got today seem to be pretty, pretty much on the big side. I really thought most of it was going to be for Chris, but you know, somehow I always find it something to buy. So, um, yeah, there's, there's quite a bit, <laughs> quite a bit on the table. Uh, let me, sh let me pick up a couple of the items and share them with you. Um, this is the auction house. When he auctions something off, he will hold up like one item, two items, three items, and then it's time. So like I wanted this beautiful, if you follow my channel, you know that I collect vintage, older, even new watering cans and look at how cool this watering can is. Hello, it's kind of, at first we like thought that was like an extra, but I've never seen a watering can like that ever. I just thought it was in, like I said, I collect these. Um, 
I have a whole shelf in our pole barn right now of watering cans because they are kind of iffy if they sell. They really don't sell if they don't have the spouts on and half of mine are probably missing the spouts. But I just love the uniqueness. So then I wanted this one and then so that meant I had to buy this one which is beautiful and not quite as patinaed. And then I had to buy <laughs> this one that I really, really necessarily wasn't interesting, interested in. Chris may try to sell it on his side of the booth or it may see its way to the auction house because they're really not an item that normally would sell. But it's just how it goes. Sometimes you have to take and pay for something that you normally don't want <laughs> because they group it all together. So um, let's see what else here. Oh, I love this. So I did spy this this guy. Oops, I dropped it. Um, this guy. Let me stand back. This guy at the uh, in the pictures. It is just an older little kid's. What it, I don't scooter. <laughs> Would you call it a scooter? I just absolutely love the patina. Is awesome. The wheels are awesome. Um, let me pick up the tag that I dropped. So it said it's from nineteen. 22 or 23? 23. 23. I'd ask Chris because um, I don't know. I, you know, I'm a reseller, but I'm also a home decor lover. So if it doesn't fit into my house, I will resell it. But uh, I love it. It kind of would take the place of like the wooden horses that I used at Christmas time. <laughs> um, let's see here. A couple little odds and ends, project pieces. Chris, <laughs> as you, said, you know, that's how it goes. So Chris gets the tools, but this time it wasn't the tools. There, this was this, this beautiful wooden box. I thought that would be great for floral arrangement. I had, I had actually been looking for a horse bit. I, it may not be quite the one that I was looking for, but to do a project for y'all on the other channel, this might work. I might be able to make it work. And then there was this cool old tin. I guess this is like a shortening tin. I don't know anything about it. I thought the graphics is still wonderful on it. It's got great patina. Looks like there was another little tin in there, a little Coca-Cola coaster set. Um, but I really just wanted this tin. And then I picked up, I actually have quite a few of these. I don't even know if they sell. It has a $15 price tag on it. This was in a box lot. And I just, I don't know if I'll keep this or if I'll resell it. We're always confused on really what it is. So if you know, let me know because I have like four of them in my own collections. That, I, But the aged metal, the patinaed wood, I just think is gorgeous. So this, a huge part of the last couple auctions we went to this auction house, um, it is a lady getting rid of her antique store or antique booth i'm not really sure but she's been there the entire time um so yeah so some of them are priced still because like even the cart was had a price tag on it so some of it still has prices on it but i don't know how long she's been trying to get out of it i don't know how long she's had it in her inventory or any anything like that well why don't i have chris pop in he got some beautiful metal pieces today and i'll let him pop in and share those with you and then i'll take the camera down and share the rest of them with you all right so at this auction again there were some tonkas and i was able to get some of the older vintage these are the road uh crew ones where they uh were a set when they came in there was probably a dump truck also and a front end loader, things to look for. And then at an antique store, we had actually saw this. And I asked Yvonne, I said, does that really say $30? And on the price tag, she goes, oh, looking at it, it looks like it's $250, or $230. But it's an old sand digger. So the kids would just play out in the yard. This was off. I actually just put a bolt through it to try to make it presentable. And it was inside. So everybody thought that it was just this, this piece right here. 
and the scoop was missing. So it was a pretty good score on that. And I'm not sure where they got them, but they had two of these. This one's in a little worse for wear. It actually has like a cover that goes over it, like if you were driving it, so you'd have the rain stay off you. And then the kid would sit on it as they were pedaling it around, as you can see. And it's one of the road, uh, what would you call it? Road uh, I don't know, for compactors, asphalt. yeah. Compactors, yeah, for asphalt maybe. Uh, so this one's missing that piece, but... But it's got great patina. Yeah, I'm sure this will end up in maybe Yvonne, my collection. Uh, a couple of things I did get also were these drill. These are the way people used to have to do it when you needed a cordless drill. <laughs> and then there's a couple of egg beater styles. These ones were for putting in large or uh, drilling through large posts so you could put your shoulder into it when you would drill. Um, in the boxes, we found some other miscellaneous things. Here's an angle finder. And they're all, all the tools there were in really good shape. So it slides out, you put it against something, you find the angle that you need. Hammer heads, Japanese some. Saw. This could be an older <laughs> version of a Japanese saw. I am not sure. Yeah, I like the Japanese saw. I mean, I'm it was sure also with sure the meat cleavers. So this actually could have been for processing meat. Uh, a couple of old wrenches. Mm. If you clean them off sometime. 3171. Oh, they have, they're numbered. <laughs> they're That's numbered. So cool. They're numbered. I was able to get a couple of small oil cans. I've never seen one like this. This actually looks like it's two water flowers. Maybe. Really small flowers. <laughs> and the top unscrews for it. Most of the time these were for like clock makers and stuff. And really that's that's pretty much my haul. Um, Yvonne was on the other side, but I was able to get her this nice scoop for a very gorgeous. reasonable price. It's a very gorgeous scoop. And then this one is a little worse for wear. I think it's, it's got to be handmade. I, mean, I love patinas though, so I could do something with that. Um, like I said, in that was were a couple of these meat cleavers and then Look at that bad boy. He would sit there and chop down on your tenderloin and cut it in half. Oh, yes. Yeah, you want to hold that up, Chris? <gasps> I know. They're like, they, I, just an old register. I would think this probably went in something. Great. For, yeah. Either way, it's beautiful. I would just spray this with um, the weather defense spray to hold the rust off. But that would just look beautiful hanging on the wall in a vignette, you know, like a wall decor, a wreath on it. Yeah, you definitely have to lock in the Yeah, you definitely rust. need to lock in the rust on it. Take a wire brush and make sure that it's not losing anything. But I know when I bought it, everybody's like, you bought a grate? And I'm like, yeah, wall decor. They're like, oh, you know, thinking outside the box there. But yeah, I'll take the camera down because the other things are on the bigger side. And I'll share with you. So though this farm is not wooden, we've already sold the other wooden one we got a, from the same auction, but a, at the folk art. Um, yeah. Same auctioneer. We, same auctioneer. So I thought when I saw this one, I'm like, you know, if it has the animals, it has all the little animals little and all the little, look at the little ducks on it. Now it is plastic. I'm pretty sure that it's older. Um, yeah, so I said, I'm like, well, if it goes reasonable enough, and then it's got the house, it's got the barn, it's got the little garage, it's got the silo. So it's got a lot of pieces other than needing a bath. So since we sold the other farm and all those animals, we thought we would give this a try. We just recently had sold one of these older style fans. So when that one of them came, I try to do that. I try not to hoard on too much. It's really hard. You know, like, especially if something just sold, then it makes sense. But if you only know, got two in your inventory and one comes up for sale, you're like, well, I probably should hold off. <laughs> but we did just sell one. And then these two are just resin pieces. 
and I cannot wait to paint them over. So the mushroom, if Chris picks the mushroom up, it is completely hollow. And like I said, it's just resin, so it's not super heavy. And then it was one of those that I had to, I wanted that, so I had to buy the frog. The frog has a hole in his bottom, like right there, yeah. So I know how to fix that, I can fix that. And then I'd have to come up with something for his eyeballs, because I'm not even sure what happened to his eyeball. He is cute though, and I know I can make him over, that's not any big deal. So if Chris holds up this weather vane, we have actually bought weather vanes from this gentleman's auction house a few times. This would probably be our third time selling. Now they go for good money when we buy them. So they sell for good money. <laughs> so, and a lot of times we can't get our hands at any of them at priced low enough to resell. And they had a flying pig and I really wanted the flying pig, but. Well, they also had what, a six and a half foot rooster? Oh, that rooster was huge. The, it was a weather vane just like this, but it was on a table and it had to have been 10 foot in the air. Yeah, it was, yeah I, we couldn't even have fit it in our booth. It didn't make any sense. But uh, So the owl, and they're not quick sells, so I didn't want to have too many going on there. I had a, sorry, you guys, I had a spot in my lens. But yes, the owl, I thought he was super cool. Not a quick sell. I mean, we're talking like a little less than $300 to resell this beautiful piece. So, and not anything I would ship because it's super heavy and super awkward. And I don't think I could create a box like that. So it spins and everything. It's made to be put on some yep. type of a building. And he somehow resells them all the time. I don't know where he buys them from. I mean, and this he, is actual copper. And then I'm sure everything's made to be outside. So the mounts on it that you can see right here, they actually angle, so you could put it on your roof and have it for a true weather vane. Yeah, so I mean, it is a true weather vane, and so I'm happy that we got a hold of one, and I like the owl. So then the few other pieces that I've got back here, just a butter mold, because I am a sucker for butter molds, a cast iron, well, he's not cast iron, he's just a metal piggy bank, not, anything terribly too old I don't think he's not that heavy but he is metal look at this cute little piggy I thought he was cute um little grater I have a project that I want to do for that and I think this might be a reproduction it's, I think it's I, a brick mold it's a brick mold but I can't I can't really tell you you know they make such good reproductions now if it's a reproduction if it's not it's still pretty cool patina I have a project that I was happy to come across a smaller cheese box without a lid. And then that horse, I can't wait to make him over. He's actually, his tail had been broken off. His ears need to be fixed. So he's a great makeover project. And then this stuff is just odds and ends that came in boxes that you're like really not sure. Somehow we get quite a few of these nozzle <laughs> nozzle holes. And then let Chris explain to you what these are, even though we don't really have any use for them and I don't think anybody would use them because they're rusted, but. Well, when I first pulled them out of the box, I thought they were actually for like kerosene lanterns, but then I found the disintegrated box that it was in and it's, I believe it says Fizz. There's Looks parts like of it. it. Here. Fizz, I think you would actually put like a seltzer bottle or something on it. Hold down on this button and it would add the little pop to your, the bubbles to your drink. Yes, but unfortunately they are rusted. Yeah. It's a cool, cool metal pieces though. So they probably will well, go Well, they got to, that vintage green look. Yeah, it. it'll probably be something that Industrial. will go to the auction house. Yep. And then our last thing that we got, we did get a couple furniture pieces. I, don't, I can't help but want furniture pieces. I don't know why because... Like now we've slowed down furniture selling wise, but it's January. But the this small furniture is still selling. Yes, this cute little. This is old, definitely an older. Oh, look at we got a bonus box in there. Hello, little box. But it needs new hinges. Like Chris noticed that these do um, don't match. They're not the same. They're not the same, and then of course they're broken. So we'd have to get two more hinges for this. I do have replacements out in the shop of this style right here. So I will just fix it in the shop. Yeah, it, and it's wonky. It's a little bit on the loose side, so it needs re-glued. It used to have, you oh. can tell it used to have a oh, lock. Oh, somebody changed. Somebody changed it out, pulled the lock out. 
And then the drawer work. I mean, the drawer's got a crack in it, but yeah. I think I would just do like Howard's Restore on it. I like. I think the wood is beautiful. The yep. wood is definitely beautiful. Just getting it tightened up. And then I thought y'all would love this. <laughs> so I do get asked a lot questions about how to cover up hearts. And these two pieces came up and really nobody wanted them because they had hearts. So look for that on the other channel of me making these two pine pieces over that have hearts. And if there's not enough hearts, hold on, there's another heart on the bottom. Oh yes, hold on. Let's let's let Chris be Vanna for a second and show off this. What what are we looking at right here, Chris? This is a work cart. <laughs> Pretty simple. Uh, it's a multi shelf cart, and he had actually two of them. I only saw this one was put together. Uh, I got it for twenty five dollars. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure if I look, it's it up, brand new. These, these are probably three hundred dollars cards. Yeah. He had another one, but it was still in the box. So I thought, eh. Do I really need one, much less two? So another guy picked up the other one that was in the box. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was a good score. We'll be able to move things around in the shop pretty efficiently with this. Uh, it'll haul a ton of smalls, I'm sure. Well, and it's nice to get stuff off the floor because he does have stuff on his floor on his side of the shop. So yeah, nice score. I just got that little farm all washed up. And I cannot believe how small the pieces are. So it's definitely probably a dairy farm. Um, but look at how, look at, look at how tiny. Oh, I had to be so careful washing these off and rinsing them off. This is definitely not, I wouldn't say this is a child or child's, yeah, that, those are, would be so edible. You know, that's older because they don't want choking hazards anymore. It is so cool. Like we got a little swing. We got some bales of hay. This looks like this is a swing set that needs to be put together. And saving these decals, they must have came off something I'll have to figure out. Uh, but oh my gosh, it's so like this is even like where the cows would have put their head in. You know, my daughter showed dairy cows. <laughs> so uh Wow, that is just a detailed little piece. There's your farmer, there's your farmer wife, the farmer's kids. Holy cow, Lito, those are some little people. Can we say, it? yeah, it was a little dirty. Um, but yeah, oh, I thought, I know even though it's not wooden and it's plastic, it's in wonderful condition wonderful shape getting it all cleaned off it is in wonderful shape oh now i just have to wait for him to dry and get those into baggies so we don't lose these pieces so you all know that i just finished up last week sharing with you how i took down my christmas i redecorated i kind of simplified my cabinets separated out to ironstone and english crockery advertising and then i get a little text today that my friend Lisa, who is also a picker or reseller and has an antique booth, who also has the love of ironstone and English, poly English crockery, I'm going to call it, she had just got a haul from Scotland. So she asked me if I was interested in coming to take a look and seeing if there's anything I'd like to purchase. Well, y'all know, English, like marmalade jars, potted ham jars, those kind of things don't come around our area very often. It's like a needle in a haystack. So, oh heck yeah, I am going over and I'm seeing her and I'm like, okay, well just hold it all for me, you know, because she was actually at the Swallow's Nest where I had an outdoor booth. She has an indoor booth and she works there on Sundays. So, yeah. Anyhow, I was like, just hold it all for me. Don't sell any of it until I get there. To, can I have first pick? So bless her heart. Because another woman did spy it on the counter and wanted, wanted something. But she said, hey, I have first dibs on somebody else right now. So anyway, I want to share with you some of the pieces. Now, now, Ironstone, the white is in everybody's jam. Probably the marmalade, crockery, 
English crockery um, food jars isn't everybody's jam either, but it is totally mine and I'm happy to have a friend that is willing to share some of her goodies with me. So right off the bat, I'll just share with you. So she had a couple of these. I have one other of the potted um, meat containers. I think I just have one in this this size. So I love it and it's it's really on the white side. And then I don't have one in this at all. So it is a potted meat, but it is Springfield's potted meat. Um, so that was awesome. And then a little one. So here's the potted meat and then here's a littler size. So I wonder if like these were like back in the day, like spam. Tater's trying to get on the, the table right now. So you might see little black and white kitty here in a second. He's like, what, who are you talking to? You know, you know how that will. So, so we'll see if he makes his rounds. So anyway, yeah, these are, and I paid retail. She bought them. I paid retail. I'm happy to have them and they're not anything I'm going to resell. I'm, oh, at this moment, because I, I'm trying to collect enough to have an amazing cupboard <laughs> that I feel is amazing cupboard. And let's see. And then one other of these, I had a little bowl, a little ironstone bowl of these little taller crockery. Look at that beautiful crazy. I know it's cracked, but I do not care. I love the age, the history of these pieces. Now these pieces, <laughs> wait for you to see these. So she saw my Instagram post where I had found the chicken feeder and I was still looking for some ironstone plates. <laughs> so yes, Tater's making his, his appearance. Um, so she's like trying to count the spots of how many more ironstone plates I have. So I, she, I bought four off of her and then, but she had all these little yummies. So let me see which one has like the best wording on it. So apparently these were eye ointment containers and this it didn't have a second part so she said so like they'd put the eye ointment on this part and he thinks it's food I say hi tater <laughs> um, and then they'd wax over it is the story that she was told and it does say ointment on it here I think this one is probably the best font so I'm not sure if it was an eye ointment to like treat an eye infection or an eye ointment for like an eye under the skin eye cream. <laughs> I'm not sure, but there was, I'm like, yes, I would love them all because I think they would be beautiful underneath a cloche or in a jar. Oh, they're just amazing. And there's something I'm never going to, I'm never going to find. So the store she got was that the lady from Scotland, um, it's like their garbage, their bottle caps, y'all. So they would go um, to the lakes, the oceans, and these, when the tide goes back out, these would be apparently, like she said, they came from the dirt. So I thought like, oh, you mean like they dug up an outhouse, you know? And she's like, no, they came from the dirt, from the ocean, from the beach area. <laughs> so like, I want to go to that ocean and pick in the dirt. That, that is awesome. I have to tell you that. Way awesome. So I was very happy with those finds. So I got that plate and three other plates. So I should be able to at least fill in all the spots on my chicken feeder. And then she had some beautiful, a little, little soap dish. And then at least I think this is a Meekin piece and a little Meekin tray. And he just was fed. So you, he's not hungry. He's just being, he's just being curious. So if you want, if you want to know the story, <laughs> um, let me share. Well, no, let's, let's, let's share this cute little, look at that little face. He's, he's trying to stalk peace right now. So, you know, we, we got Tater from the Humane Society. We adopted him. Um, he'd been fixed. He had all the shots, his rabies, his feline, you know, all, everything that he needed to have. And then when we picked him up, like days before, he had finished the antibiotic because he had an upper respiratory infection. So, you know, it's a humane society. There's a lot of animals that come in. They do try to keep them separated, but there's like a cat house of all the same age of cats. 
So we had him for probably a week, and he was a very healthy kitten, energetic, playful. Him and Peach are getting along just wonderfully. It took a couple days, but wonderfully they're getting along. And then all of a sudden, in the, one morning, so it was a Thursday was the week to week, and then Friday morning, like the night before, he was playing with the little laser pointer for an hour, hour and 45 minutes. I'm like, you're panting. You've got to stop. I, you, you're going to. Anyway, so we get up the next morning and he doesn't want to eat his breakfast. And I thought, well, that's weird because he kind of is like, oh, like, yeah. Um, and then I like I cuddled with him a little bit and his nose felt warm and dry. And I'm like, OK, well, I've grown up with cats my entire life and around animals. I'm like, you, you don't feel good. And so, like, in a matter of minutes, um, he just, like, was uneasy. He kept going in and out of the litter box, like, 60, 70 times in a two-hour period. And then had some dry heaving. And I'm like, I, and I hadn't even found a vet yet locally. My vet is, from this house, is over an hour away that I've had for 30-some years, which is just too, an hour in a kitty care is just too long. Um, so I used my daughter's vet here in town and he just had like a reaction to the antibiotic that he was on, like just gave him a UTI and then, and then, um, apparently like the food changed, even though our cat's on sensitive food, Peach is on sensitive food, um, just the food changed, just irritated. So he had like, like gastro. Anyway, that poor little kitty spent the night in the vet's office. I got three things of fluid because he was dehydrated and um, two rounds of antibiotics intravenously. And so now he's got some probiotics and some antibiotics and some sensitive food. And he might, he might actually have to have sensitive food for his stomach his entire life. So be it. But I just could not believe how fast a little kitty turned like a 360 and I just thought I, I'd never seen that. I mean, I've seen him be sick, you know, but I never seen one just keep going in and out of his litter box because he had, oh, it was so sad. It was so sad, but he is 110% better. I, I shout out to Northside Vet for um, treating him and taking us on and as a new patient, you know, when you have a sick baby. Luckily that vet clinic was the one that deals with the Humane Society here in the local town. So he had already been there for his spay or his neutering and then his shots and everything. So they had a record of him. So that, that did help. But all that was a scary time. I'm like, I just brought you into your family. And then I was afraid that, you know, being gone overnight, that Peach would be like having to try to figure out how to get back and like him again, you know. But Peach was excited to see him. He was all perky. There was no hissing. It was, it was a blessing. So... That was a scary moment. I, we all hate when we hate when our babies are sick, even our fur babies, you know, because they're really they're so helpless. You know, they can't tell you what's wrong or what hurts or anything. So I did miss him that night terribly bad. And I can tell Peach did, too. But I'm glad that he is all well. So I do have a couple more pieces I will share with you from that haul. Um, I don't need another spool, but look at the color of the yarn. The thread on these spools, is that not gorgeous? It was the thread, even though I probably have a hundred of these type of spools. Um, not all of them have thread on them. They're usually like naked. <laughs> so I love, love those. And then she is the one that I always got my smaller little register numbers from. I love these little pops. I think they're very cool. Something about old wording and numbers that just kind of bring a hutch to life. It just really does. And then the last little thing, she had some old clocks and she saw that I loved old clocks. And the one clock out in our entryway that I have some brass pieces on, I thought I still need some more pieces. And I think this is, uh, this is a Walt. I can't see, it's so scratched up but I don't care, wall, time, electric. Um, but I love clocks, I love clock faces. I don't care that it, it does, if it works, or if it doesn't work, it looks like it's a wind up. It's a very cool, it'll go great on that shelf. So shout out to my friend Lisa for helping me with my addiction to items that I normally 
very seldom ever find on a pick or even going into all the antique and auctions that we go to. So I just had to pop on and uh, we'll see. We'll see if I, um, how I add these, <laughs> add these in. Light first. There. This is a dark little area. So I really like this clock. Um, oh, what to move around. Okay, so let's move the pig over the books, over the kaleidoscope. I think I can put the clock here. That'll work out perfect. There's actually a little plate divot in there that it'll hold on. Um, maybe move these down just a little bit, even though that's not a clock. <laughs> it is not. Um, we'll move these down. That. 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 There. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see, I could fit one more thing on that shelf. I would like to find some extra stuff to go around that mantle, like in the brass hue. But that's the fun of being a picker. I can be on the hunt. So how did I fit these into my <laughs> cabinet? This is how I did. So I just it's just fun to put them all in there. I love the little smaller ones. And then double doing a double stack. And I do have, so I do have more that I could sell on eBay, but I wasn't sure if anybody was even interested in them. I just thought they were so super cute. So I did a little, little stack of them. Now, most of my wording is black, but that's okay. I, it's the fun of adding and playing around. So then I just added that other little potted meat to this little stack. But I really, I really like it. So I love, there's something about the advertising wording that just, that just, I don't know, I just love it. And the age of these little guys, my goodness. And though I probably should pop some of these on for you guys to purchase too, if anybody's interested. May not be this week. I'm running, I'm running out of time. There's not enough hours in the day, y'all, but... Yeah, so that's how I added them into this cupboard. <laughs> and, you know, you have a kitty cat that follows you wherever you go. I, I am so happy he's so energetic. Aren't you, Tater? He was hiding underneath all the shoes. <laughs> he's like, where are you going? He's so cute. You can't go up there. One of Tater's favorite little things, I had to order a whole bunch of these, is these little poof balls. <laughs> there's something about a little cat playing and chasing after something that's so so cute he's a little soccer player and as at the moment he's oh i'm trying to keep up with him he does play fetch with it really well and he's like okay i brought it back to you so throw it again for me let's see if i can back up back up ready Go get it. <laughs> Wipe out. Oh, what is this so cute? Why is that so cute? Oh, he likes to play underneath the table and climb on the bottom of the legs and stuff. Let's see if I get him. <laughs> so that's his jam that's what he likes to do oh i can't i can't keep up with him y'all i'm gonna make you dizzy but he's he is well he's very well and then since we couldn't keep up on the laser pointer <laughs> i bought this contraption that does the laser i don't know like okay let's see what it does I don't know, like, should it be on the ground? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, it was kind of too far up in the air. <laughs> oh, them and their the things you do is like having a new baby. Let's see.
Yeah, so we bought a little tunnel bed for them because Tater is not declawed. We've always had declawed cats, and I know they don't do that anymore. Um, he wanted to scratch on our couch, so we had needed to get a scratching pole, some little scissors, and then a bed like a tunnel. He loves to tunnel under blankets and pillows and all that. I'm not sure if that's exciting him as much as us running it around or not. I don't know. I think he likes He's. <laughs> I don't know. Eh, eh, we'll see how it works. He's really not chasing that one as much as like the one that you have the battery in. That there, yeah. See, that one doesn't go as much. That one's not. Peach is, <laughs> Peach is just staring at it. He's like, a, I look at how he sit, like he chases it. He like scrambles his legs weirdly. I don't know. We'll have to play with that one a little bit and see. That's a lot of little dots going on. I'm a little confused myself. So the first time ever. I had a friend screenshot a picture of an Instagram post for me and I actually purchased something off of Instagram. I have never done that before. Oh, that was a little, I was a little nervous, you know, you just, you just never know. So I contacted the seller, asked her what, what was available to purchase. So the draw was she had like 16 or 17 different marshmallow tins, old marshmallow tins. And there actually wasn't even a campfire tin in the bunch. So I'm like, oh my gosh. And I had just lost a bid on one at a, a recent auction that I probably should have went higher on, but I just didn't like, there's so, I didn't know there were so many vintage marshmallow tins out there. And so when I saw her post, I was like, oh, and she's selling them and you can buy them via Instagram. So I had to, I had to check it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So I purchased two, they came. So would you like to see them? Oh. And if you've ever purchased anything for me, for me, bae, I probably go above and beyond try my best to protect the item that I'm shipping. Now she's all the way in Oregon, so I had to get all the way here to Michigan and they're tin. So, I mean, but still you have to package stuff like a football team is trying to win the Super Bowl since the Super Bowl is coming up, <laughs> the Super Bowl. So let me share with you these, I just got just two, only two, but not a campfire one. So I did open up the box. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yes. Package, package, package. That's the way we like it. So bubble wrapped. Beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to share with you. Yes, I really wanted a small one. And this one is just like the one that I wanted that I lost the bid on at the auction. So let's see. So first, let's get that unwrapped. So Look at that beautiful vintage green. Y'all know that I love to paint vintage green. So that one goes with this one. She protected these so well. <gasps> Look at that beauty. Oh, so let's put the lid on it. There we are. Oh, I'm so excited. I think, oh, maybe it's the lot number. I don't know. Maybe it's the lot number. We'll have to take it off. Maybe the lot number, the order number. Okay. Ang Angelus? English? I don't know. I don't speak. Yeah, I, I, I can't even speak English well enough sometimes, but. Beautiful, beautiful patina. So I had an idea of where I wanted to put them. And so I didn't want, I wanted something to go with my yacht tin and my marshmallow, my campfire tins that I have. Um, so I really didn't want to overwhelm the shelf. So that's why I'm like, oh, look at that small one. So I still kind of going with the light colors. So 
it has a paper label. So Monarch Marshmallow. Look at that age. Oh, it is just beautiful. So I'll share with you. Oh, it's got a lion on it. Um, I'll share with you where I'm going to put these. So this is where I want to put them. It's just a little corner hutch that has my yummy Fenton Hobnail Swung vases on it. I didn't share with you that Chris found one for Christmas for me, so I have another new addition. That was awesome. So they're not something that comes up too awful much in this area anyway, but I didn't want to put these away. I wanted to enjoy them all year long, not just for Christmas. And I usually have a chair, but you know, we have Tater now. <laughs> and he's a very energetic, and that chair is usually in front of here. But ta ta Tater had the zoomies this morning. But Tater had the zoomies this morning, and he jumped on that second shelf of my swung vases. So we decided that, or I decided quickly, that that chair was not staying there by any means. So... Oh, he'll, he, you know, he's just a six-month-old kid, and he just has the zoomies all the time. So I'll move a chair just so I can play with these tins and figure out how I want them to be up there. Um. Play a little bit. Oh, maybe, maybe like that. I guess I ha I guess I have some room for some more. Um. Let, let me play with it for a minute. <laughs> I could get some more to go high. I don't know. I don't think they look too bad. Um, yeah. Yep. I probably, maybe I could get another one. <laughs> uh, baby steps. Sometimes you just have to hunt for them in the wild. Or I think she may have a few left, but some of the ones that I wanted were already taken. Um, because the post was three days old, but. So I'll share her Instagram page. She does ship. She just started her page, which was what made me a little leery that she didn't have a ton of followers, but it worked out wonderful. I paid her via Venmo and good to go. And she sent me the picture of the shipping label and that it was on its way. So I'm pretty excited. Um, you know, I'll, I might leave them that way. I think I like them that way. Um, you know, what we, I play with my home decor all the time, so who knows? Next time you see a video, it might be changed, so. So we're looking at the last two minutes of the auction where our stuff is up for sale, seeing if we got anything that got some bids on it. Some things, not everything. And we are bidding on this piece right here. Oops, I'm trying to focus. Oh, he focused in. <laughs> I'm focusing in and he made it larger. I want those two benches. I think they would be beautiful painted in black. So we'll see how, see if we end up with them or not. So far we have the winning bid. What did we, how many lots do we have? 11? Yes. 11 lots. So some have bids, some don't have bids. It happens. The last seconds on some of the bids. That one has some have been extended. It's like that one doesn't have any bids on it, and that's okay. I mean, better than donating it. Your jewelry's doing good. Mm -hmm. 
Random costume jewelry, 31. So with doing these online bids, though, you've got to pay attention because this has 10 minutes left now. Because and if it goes above our current bid of $50, we'll have to change it. Yeah, sorry, that's hard to focus in on. But yeah, so if there's multiple people bidding on the same item, the company will then add 15 minutes time to it. If there's just so, one bid, it'll just end at the 9 o'clock time. Which these are if complete now. Yep, if there's no bids, they, there's just no bids. So we can decide to take it and just donate it. Or we can let it go again. But Christmas is not selling at <laughs> all. Yeah. So we'll probably just go ahead and donate it. I think a couple of them are, they've already done their time twice. So that one did get a bid, didn't it? Oops. I stopped Which one? Up. The one Christmas, nope, no, nothing, nope, Christmas, nothing nope. on the Christmas lot, sorry. It's the wrong year, wrong time of the year. Yeah, that's okay. It was just extra leftover stuff, so that's hard to scroll in on. Okay, so now if I'm not standing upright, can we see it? So this is, this is the one we're bidding on still. Um, and then... It looks like this one is still being bidded on because there must be multiple people. This jewelry lot, this is a weather vane that we've had for about two years. We've marked it down a couple times and it's just, they're not selling. So it just takes up valuable space. So we decided to send it to auction. And then most of this up here is just miscellaneous stuff extra stuff that came in auction lots or things that didn't sell like that big brass lamp see <laughs> somebody got it for five dollars so that's good um and then i had some glassware that i no longer was interested in trying to sell so that auction's complete this is just some brass stuff miscellaneous some more miscellaneous and like I said most of this is just extra stuff that came in auction lots so instead of donating it we thought we would try to make a recoup a little bit of our money oh <laughs> I forgot we wanted to bid on those oops and it had no bids <laughs> But sometimes when it has no bids and we forgot to um, bid on it because we were worried about those benches, I don't know, maybe we can buy them that day. I don't know how that works, but oops. So that has one bid. These were a couple incomplete old stamp sets. And then just some more just random. This one's actually not necessarily ours. That's somebody else's. Um, so some, it's just some grain sacks that were not in the best of shape. So just some miscellaneous. Okay, so the person that somebody's bidding 17 bids, it just went up $4. It's $2 increment bids on this online. So, yep, we just have to wait. We just have to wait and see what happens. So why I'm watching <laughs> the bidding, I'm playing with the kitty cat. Isn't that what we do, multitask? Can't forget our furry friends here who has a string obsession. Loves strings. Tater, show them how cute you are with your strings. Says hi cute. I know I am. Don't scratch the couch. <laughs> that training is fun. Doing pretty good. Peach isn't sure. Like, do I want to play with it? Do I not want to play with it? I will just watch the crazy, the crazy cat <laughs> with the string. So like this lot is going to end in eight seconds because 
people stop to bidding. If there's no other bids, then our jewelry will sell for $31, which it was a whole bunch of chains and costume jewelry that came on actually a coffee rack that I wanted. So that one would be complete. And then every once in a while you have to refresh the page to make sure that everything's current. So it looks like people are still bidding on the lightning rod. A lot of resellers in, offload their items on here or they buy items to resell or repurpose on here. I've met people from Shipshawana that come up here to buy from this auction house. It's only online and it's usually the last Friday of each month. Okay, anticipation, one minute and 45 seconds to go. We still have the winning bid. People kept bidding on the lightning rod, so now it's up to 36, so they added another 15 minutes to that. So hopefully nobody bids on the bench set. Or they'll add another 15 minutes onto it. So we'll check back. Okay. Last minute, last seconds. Yeah. Yep, you got it. Yes. I say that until I have to paint them. So the noise is their little toy. You know, having a kitten in the house is like having a new baby. You get lots of toys. <laughs> lots of new toys to keep them entertained. So then it comes in a text a butterfly. Maybe. Probably not because I'm on film. Oh, there he goes. It's a tech. So thanks for watching this week's video. You know, sometimes there's big renovations going on, small renovations. We do have a couple projects that we'd like to do coming up here on the channel. But I don't know, there's just something about when you get a snowstorm, you kind of like you lose that lack of like, oh, I want to do this and it's been foggy and it's been icy and it's been a lot of weather here in Michigan. I'm sure it's been a lot of weather all around the world, but just kind of lose the motivation. And then I can't wait for it to get, I don't know, the, the January like slums or whatever, where I can't wait for it to stay lighter. I mean, five o'clock and it's dark and you're just like, ugh. You know, you just kind of lose your motivation. So I hope you enjoyed a little bit of this and that that went on through the week. So again, thanks for watching guys and we will see you next week and you can see what we've been up to. Bye.